Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I wanted to talk to you about Evo Magazine's Car of the Year competition. So Ecotti comes from Evo, one of the world's best supercar mags, an amazing read, and they do this test every year where they put together cars trying to find which offers the best thrill and driving experience. So you have supercars, sports cars, hatchbacks, a whole sort of different variety across the field, and they take them around some pretty awesome roads. This year they did a wicked route up around the Scottish Highlands, had some amazing weather, and put out a pretty stunning video. The video over on the Evo channel is spectacular and if you haven't already watched it before you continue too far in this video I'd recommend going to check that out just so I don't sort of spoil anything and reveal who's won it which I'm going to do very shortly. Um, so they do this route um, taking some of the best cars of the moment so supercars like the 675 LT, the Aventador SV, the Ferrari 488 GTB, um, the 911 GT3 RS, the new one. Um, they take sports cars, the Lotus Evora 400, the Porsche Cayman GT4 um, and also some hatchbacks as well from Seat, Peugeot um, and all sorts of others. So they take all these cars out on the roads with the quest to find which is the most exciting to take out and drive. And it's always a fascinating read because it's very close to sort of the kind of driving I do, taking my cars off on road trips and just having a good time making these videos and sharing them with you guys. So this year's competition was particularly interesting to me because both of these featured the 675 LT and the Cayman GT4. And obviously they were going up against some pretty stiff competition, um, especially the 911 GT3 RS. Um, Evo have frequently had the victor being a 911, the GT3 or the previous RS um, of different sorts because they are basically pure driver's cars. So I was interested to see how these two um, would fare in this year's competition. And I'm very pleased to say that between them, we have the winner and we have the runner up. So I own the two cars that came first and second in Ecotti this year, which I think is just awesome. Um, and that's the reason I bought these cars is because they're proper driver's cars to go out and enjoy. And they're both sort of special editions, fairly limited build runs. Um, now I will jump straight into which one because it's possibly a surprise. You might have expected the McLaren to be the victor, but it was in fact the Cayman GT4. This is the victor of this year's Ecotti and I'm going to take them both out for a drive and explain to you a little bit more about why that is and what's so exciting about the GT4, even though the 675 LT has properly moved on the game for McLaren. It's such an animal, especially, I mean, the 650S, the 12C was already amazing, the 650S, absolutely fantastic, but the 675 LT just has the extra level of emotion and engagement that McLaren needed to add and has really made this a proper, proper driver's car. And that's the car I'm going to be driving first. Um, this year's, well, in this drive now. These two cars actually, the GT4 won with 84 points and the LT had 82 points. And then it was another 10 or so points further before you got to the GT3 RS. But the way they do it is each of the eight judges drives all of the cars, ranks them in their own personal order, and they sort of tot up a point system um, for all the different cars, you know, the most points for first place on each list. GT4 came first for four of the drivers LT came first for four others of the drivers. So for first places, they were completely dead on. Um, three of the other drivers, sorry, four of the other drivers had GT4 second, three had LT second, and one had the 488 second. So LT literally just missed out by the skin of its teeth. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty close call. Um, but like I say, right, I'm gonna jump now into the LT um, and tell you a little bit more about why this car is so exciting. I mean, from the outset, obviously, this is the track-focused version of McLaren's P11 flat platform. 675 horsepower metric is uh, metric PS, 666 brake horsepower, the devil's number, and 100 kilos of weight taken out of it from the 650S. So it's only 1240 kilos. It's very light, very stiff with the carbon fiber tub, and it's absolutely insane how fast it is. I'm not going to be driving it fast in today's weather conditions, that's for sure. What I can do is come round and jump in and go for a little drive. The weather 
today is absolutely frightful. And I'd say that's pretty representative of Britain in the winter. Obviously, it is December, it's nearly Christmas, so what should I expect? This car's running on the P0 tyres. Now, standard is with the Pirelli Trofeo Rs, which have so much more grip, but certainly on a day like today, you would never get them up to temperature. That's why I had the P0s put on this car. But the 675 LT is such an animal. McLaren needed to make something with more emotion. And this really, really is that car. We're going to hear shortly so much more noise, so much more excitement, so much more involvement. It can be quite intimidating though, because it is insanely powerful. And perhaps, you know, I think that's where the GT4 can slightly excel, because this is almost slightly too much power to actually go out and use. I mean, cruising along right now, it's quite stiff, not too stiff, stiffer than the 650S, but not unpleasantly so. Very snug in the buckets, which is just awesome. And you feel super, super connected. Uh, the steering ratio is very tight, so it literally just darts about um, with some insane precision. So it's very, very fun to drive. Um, I'm gonna put it now uh, into the sport mode. So if I put the powertrain in sport mode, you have the uh, no ignition cart, which is where the exhaust is gonna get a little bit fruity on us. Um, and we'll get some cracks and things going on. It sounds so good. So it's got so much more excitement as you're driving it, which is what McLaren needed. And I think certainly what I see when I'm posting out pictures on social media, the reaction to 675 LTs is just stunning. It's a totally, totally different beast from McLaren. Exactly, exactly what the brand needed. And obviously with only 500 of these, it's a very, very special car. The 500 coupes, because they have now announced. And there will be 500 spiders as well. That's why this car is up there in that list. It's just amazing. It's it's such an exciting package, so involving, such a driver's car, and the weather is absolutely atrocious today. And it's a limited special edition, you know, only a thousand in total. Coops and spiders. And I think uh, you've probably already seen by this point, I've put out an announcement that I've ordered a spider as well, so I don't know whether that will replace my coupe or what I'll do with it, but I can't wait for that car just to get more of that sort of noise by having the roof down and the excitement that comes from that on the side but just concentrating because you have to concentrate pretty hard driving this car it's very um, it is very involving that's that's the term that's what it needs but that's what makes it a proper driver's car it's also you know, you're quite easy to place it and you're sat in this carbon fiber tarp that's absolutely dead on it's so rigid and supportive it's, it's just a brilliant car, absolutely brilliant, and it's phenomenally fast. Like, I'm not even going to begin to try and pretend that I can drive it anywhere near the limit on the road because you just can't. What you can do though is have an awful lot of fun without having to race it. Now, that's one of the things the previous McLaren's didn't necessarily do so perfectly was that to get the excitement back from the car, you literally had to be going back 10. Uh, up at the top end of the rev range here, you just play around between 3,000 upshift and five, pop it back down again, and you can have a lot of fun just doing that without having to feel like you're going absolutely mental. So the 675 LT is up there because it's an awesome machine. They've done such a good job with this car. And if this is anything to say for the future of McLaren, I'm very, very excited. No question, that thing is epic. It has a list price of about £260,000, but spec'd up like this in a nice sort of configuration. You're looking at just over 300. They're trading for a good chunk above that right now, and I'm not surprised at all. It's such an exciting car. It's exactly what McLaren needed. But now onto the star of the show, the Porsche Cayman GT4. Flat six, 3.8 litre engine from the Carrera S. The suspension components at the front from the 911 GT3. A six speed manual gearbox. We've got 385 horsepower, about 1450 kilos of weight. So it's not going to be breaking records from a sort of performance point of view, but that's not what this car is all about. Zero to 60 is a touch over four seconds, but they're not aiming for that. They built this car purely to make something that is spectacularly fun and exciting. So it's the mid-engine Cayman layout with the 911 engine, Michelin Sport Cup 2 tires, very, very sticky rubber but sort of the right kind of balance where you can use them on the road. And just a pretty epic machine. Let's jump in and take this one for a drive. Let's talk GT4 then. 
and the winner. And it really, really is a special car to drive. From the minute you get in here, you know that you're driving something that is really, really gonna be exciting and rewarding and give you what you want back from a proper driver's car. Now, it was actually clean just before I took it out and the weather has got atrocious. So I've gotta be a little bit careful because those tires, as sticky as they can be, they can also be a little bit sketchy and wet. Uh, we've got a couple of buttons, the sport mode, which gives us the automatic rev clipping downshift, which I love. It just sounds phenomenal, it sounds amazing. And then if you want to make it even louder, we can open up the sports exhaust, put it back into fourth, so that I can drop down some gears just to show you that. You get that blipping, which is just brilliant. The noise is truly, truly, truly great in this car. And it's part of it, you know, you're completely connected, you're involved. The manual gearbox is something that so few cars now have, but this is done perfectly. The setup is completely bang on. The electric steering is absolutely fantastic. It's not, you know, it's not been a detriment to the car in any way, shape, or form. The uh, connection, everything, the whole suspension, chassis, the whole lot is just a genius product from a Porsche sort of GT engineers. They've made something absolutely brilliant that just works as a phenomenal, phenomenal. some people about the gearing, the ratios being too long, um, but that I think appeals more to my kind of generation because it means basically you can do a lot without too many changes, you're not constantly changing gear, like you might be in an older car, um, just every now and then you're bouncing back and forth, it's on a nice road, you know, you're between second and third, um, and it's, it's a nice balance, I really actually like it, you know. so well and it gives you so much back that you can really really push on you know for it's quite it's quite incredible actually how a car with sub 400 horsepower can make a move i've had this car driving around the mountains near the south of france the french riviera and it really really sticks it has so much aero and grip just a phenomenal phenomenal piece of kit and like i'm very 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 lucky that i'm able to be driving my uh, my gt4 it's probably one of the very best cars we're going to see in a long time. When you think it's only a £65,000 car list price, uh, with my spec it's, I think it's low, uh, mid-70s. Uh, it's no, no surprise that with the sort of short demand, only around 2,500 being built globally, uh, that these are also commanding quite a premium. Probably even more so now that it's been the winner of Ecotti, uh, but it's... I, I don't even really have words. I've done quite a few videos on my channel talking about how fun this car to drive actually is. And it's, well, it's quite hard to explain, but it's just an absolute hoot. You get in it and well, you'll get out of it after a good drive and all you're sort of left thinking is, I want to do that again. You just want to keep driving it. It's just an absolutely, absolutely amazing machine. One of the things that sort of just works so well is that the car feels so small and nimble, it's very easy to place it on the road in a way that something bigger and more sort of substantial like the McLaren, you can't necessarily do this thing. You just feel like you can fit through anything. You know exactly where it is. You can just push on and drive it sort of completely properly without, I don't really know how to describe it, without having to worry about where you are on the road. It's just gonna go. It's just gonna point, go in that direction, not worried about the width of the thing or anything like that you've got a great viewing position you're just gonna drive with a huge huge smile on your face that's gt4 and that's why it's so brilliant it might not be the fastest car out there but it's the perfect balance and setup it's a usable amount of power you know 400 horsepower is right on the mark for where you can go out on a public road drive the car actually feel like you get to use the rev range and it's just set up brilliantly with a manual gearbox with the suspension that's just absolutely delightful. The whole car is, it's basically perfect. And that's why it's the winner of this year's Ecotti over the McLaren. I think the McLaren would easily slaughter the supercar competition. It's so, so quick, but equally so exciting at real world speeds. The GT4, you just can't really describe it. It's just a truly wonderful, wonderful car. Um, Porsche made something very, very special with that. 
and that's why it's this year's winner of the Evo Car of the Year. And, um, you know, between my two, I was actually trying to say this, when I was down in Monaco um, with these two and with my FF as well, and I had all three cars and I was driving them back to back and just playing around with the cars. Genuinely, I think the one to take out on the road and actually drive is the GT4. It's, it's just, just so much fun, just so much fun. The LT is obviously a complete savage weapon, but because of how intimidating it is, you can't sort of just take it out and grab it by the sort of throat of, uh, scruff of its neck and drive it in the same way um, so easily. Whereas GT4, you just get in it, you get in it and drive. Um, and when you get back, you just want to go and drive it again. Um, and there, I guess we go, my two cars. And uh, a quick sort of look into um, Ecotti 2015. I wonder what's going to be in the 2016 competition. Actually, I don't even really know what's going to be in next year's Ecotti. That'll be very interesting to see um, what cars are coming out over the uh, over the course of the next year. But for this year, they had a pretty pretty strong lineup with the new 488 GTB, the Aventador SV, which is of course an absolutely savage V12 brute, um, and the new 991 GT3 RS. But needless to say, I'm a very very happy guy to have cars that came in first and second place. It's going to be a lot of fun over the next couple of months still driving these cars around. Certainly the last month or two down the south of France has been amazing. And about 1,500 miles so far on my LT and about 3,000 on the GT4 because it's been just been driving it everywhere because the thing is just insane. The LT is a little bit more... I need to get some tracks booked for it to properly, properly enjoy it. It's just a little, it's just a little bit too much. For these kind of roads, this kind of weather here in the UK, um, it's just a little bit too much car um, to go out and thrash it around. Um, so I'm just enjoying driving it and just having a good time. But there we go, my view on Ecotti this year. They definitely got it right. GT4, well worthy winner from everything I've driven, um, even though the GT3 RS is a fantastic car. I had a good, good innings with that car driving around the Alps and it's truly, truly awesome. I love one, but unfortunately they are also extra sold out. So I'll wrap up there. Go check out the Evo video if you haven't because it's a truly awesome piece of video. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'll catch up with you very soon. Cheers. For the very first time, I'm able to take a look at my own McLaren 6. Around one of the new Schmimobiles, the Ferrari FF. So when I saw the advert for this car, you apply paint protection film to a supercar here at Topaz.